Rebecca, so what exactly do we know at this point? Sure. So, um, so two things really broke this weekend um, regarding Evergrande. The first is that firms owned by the city governments of Shenzhen and Guangzhou are going to buy equity worth about $4.6 billion from existing investors in Hungdao real estate. So that's the unit that holds uh, Evergrande's main property assets in China. Um, and essentially, um, that sort of shifting its ownership more towards firms that are linked to the state. So in some ways, it's positive news. It, it kind of may be a sign of willingness to support Evergrande as it tackles its debt load. But obviously, this was also a result of a key strategic investor um, demanding an exit. Um, and then the second thing we saw the, uh, this weekend is that Evergrande Property Services Group, so which is the property management arm, um, which Evergrande Group owns about 72% of, also announced its IPO. Um, it's looking to raise about $2 billion book building this week with a listing uh, plan for 2nd of December. So what are the implications for investors then? So... You know, going back to the first point that we're seeing um, a state-linked firm stepping in um, to buy equity, 4.6 billion, obviously quite a, a hefty amount there. Um, and this shift or this side of willingness from state-linked firms, um, that could be good for investors, particularly for bond investors, um, and particularly onshore. We, you, we actually get a sort of clear sense of how the bonds are trading again this morning at market open. It may take a few hours to settle. Um, but that should be likely positive for, for bond investors. Um, a Sunday statement from the firm also said that for the strategic investors holding 4.3 billion yuan of equity, where the agreement hadn't been struck, that Evergrande has repaid the principal in cash and repurchased the shares. So again, sort of fairly positive news. Um, and then coupled with the IPO news, it's a potential positive indicator. But of course, investors are looking really closely at precisely how much it raises and whether it meets that kind of $2 billion mark. And investors will be watching out for in terms of the next milestones in this saga, Rebecca? Sure. Well, the big thing, of course, with Evergrande is how it continues to manage its debt. Its debt. Um, so that the first thing is, of course, dealing with its maturities, its ability to uh, pay its imminent maturities. And the second point will be its capacity to reduce its debt load. So um, we've seen Chinese authorities looking to curb the amount of, kind of excessive borrowing by, by, property, invest, uh, by, sorry, by property firms um, of late. Um, and so I think it'll be particularly interesting to see if Evergrande are able to meet any of the so-called three red line requirements this year, or if it manages to cut its debt to asset ratio set by authorities. Essentially, investors are going to be looking at, very, very closely looking at, how Evergrande is um, dealing with, with its really mammoth debt load.